Certainly our pleasure. So uh, it is summertime. As we have been noting, there have been uh, more and more barrels coming in and around places. So, um, I mean, it may be obvious to some people, but if it's in your neighborhood, it seems really important. So we'll talk about as many of these as we can. Uh, what projects are going on now? And I know the notable one is on uh, I-77, right? Yes, we do have a resurfacing project. Uh, this is nighttime resurfacing, and that is from Strasburg to New Philadelphia. Uh, and again, that's you know running about 7 p.m. to 6 a.m. So for folks that are traveling through there in the evening, in the early morning hours, you know you might see some delays there. Um, of course, one lane of traffic is maintained in each direction during that work. Uh, but we remind folks, you know, of course, to slow down through the work zone and, uh, you know, give those workers as much room as you possibly can when traveling through there. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, what other things are going on? I know I quizzed you about a couple of them. There's uh, 93 is closed north of Dundee, but that's uh, about over. Yes, that's going to wrap up the end of this week. That was for a culvert replacement. And uh, we've got some kind of miscellaneous things going on around the county. Uh, one of those is ongoing there just north of Tuskegee. That's a bridge replacement project. And we've got traffic restricted down to one lane through there. Um, and we've got some stuff coming up. Uh, we have a closure on 800, and that's just south of Denison. So that's going to start in July. And that's a, um, I believe it's a 75 day closure of the road. Um, so for folks that, you know, frequently travel, you know, especially down to, to Freeport and such, mm -hmm. uh, you're going to have to detour traffic there. So. Maybe look for your own shortcut. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, and, and of course, you know, we always, we always say, you know, we have to detour traffic via state routes, mm -hmm. you know, what we maintain, you know, and everything, but of course folks find their, their own routes. Right. That's, that's true. Uh, that's 800. And then, um, is there work, there's work coming around Tappan later too. Is that right? Yes. Um, and, uh, Initially, a rumor was that we we're going to shut it down again, but I'm, I'm happy to say we are not. Um, but we are going to restrict traffic. Uh, this will be right at the west end of Tappan Lake near the dam, um, you know, in that west end mm -hmm. boat ramp. And that's for a bridge uh, replacement project. Um, but we will maintain one lane of traffic. Uh, it's a very short zone. However, if you are traveling through there, especially through those high traffic times, uh, you're going to see some delays through there. If you're headed to the lake, just keep that in mind. Um, that's going to start up here in the next couple of weeks. Okay. And the fish will stay there and still bite, even if you have to wait 10 extra minutes. So we... Exactly. They'll still, they'll still be there. <laughs> About later Absolutely. on in the summer, I think you told me there's something going on. And is that in the Eastern part of the district? Yeah, we have a resurfacing project. Uh, and this includes um, State Route 39. And that runs all the way from Carroll County line to, the, you know, Sherrodsville area to uh, New Philadelphia. And uh, we're going to see that work starting. It's not going to start till later this summer, uh, possibly September. And then also on State Route 212 uh, from Bolivar to the State Route 212, State Route 800 intersection, um, we'll be resurfacing that as well. So that won't involve any uh, full closures then? No, I'm happy to say that it will not. <laughs> so uh, last summer was pretty significant with 250 closing and and everything, but I'm happy to say we'll maintain traffic through those resurfacing projects. Yeah, and I know everybody complains, and uh, you've got a thankless job in that sense because uh, mm -hmm. the barrels and this and that, but if we if we don't have these things fixed and the bridges and the roads, then there's the complaints of a different kind, right? Absolutely, absolutely. We know it's frustrating, and, and believe me, we, we all drive the same roads. Everybody at ODOT drives the same roads, and, um, you know, it can, it can prohibit us from getting to where we need to go, and, uh, but it's all for good. You know, we're making the road safer and, and taking care of what we have. And uh, just for reference, I mean, uh, we've talked about the projects that are in our listening area pretty much. But uh, how big is District 11 that uh, you have to kind of keep track of and uh, maintain the roads and bridges, et cetera? We have seven counties, and that includes Belmont, Carroll, Columbiana, Harrison, Holmes, Jefferson, and Tuscarawas. And uh, we maintain about 3,800 lane miles and uh about thousand one thousand bridges um that we maintain as well in the district so um definitely um you know we may be rural but uh you know a lot of you know happening things in in our area you know we're of course home to uh holmes county which is you know amish country and everything and uh you know we go all the way from millersburg to the river 
um, there along State Route 7 in, in Jefferson, Belmont, and Columbiana. Yeah, that's a pretty wide swath of uh, geography, if I may say so. So that takes in a lot it of is, uh, absolutely. Things. And you mentioned Amish country. I mean, uh, obviously the horse the horses don't do the roads any good either, right? even though they stay on the side. Right. Nope, they are not easy on it. Um, that's for sure. Um, you know, something, you know, of course, unique to our area. That is true. I did want to ask you, we're, uh, we're out of the cold weather season now. We're not going to have any more snow until, uh, I don't know, next week. No, it'll be further than that, but, um, <laughs> you never know. <laughs> I know Ohio. that's the whole thing. Uh, it was a rather <laughs> mild winter. We didn't have a lot of, uh, snow plowing, et cetera, to do. How does that affect ODOT? Do we do we have a salt supply left over? Did it uh, help with the maintenance of the trucks, that sort of thing? Absolutely. You know, uh, it helps with our stockpile, you know, for next year, of course. But we'll still get our deliveries this summer, uh, which is always entertaining to watch salt being delivered in, in you know, 90-degree weather. But, <laughs> um, you, you know, it's one of those things where, you know, we may have saved some money this year, but, you know, next winter we might be hit hard and that salt's going to be, you know, used, of course. Um, but the nice thing is with these mild winters, our crews are able to get out there and do maintenance work. Uh, so stuff that, you know, might have been held off towards spring, we were able to get done during those winter months, which, you know, kind of gave us a jump on things. So, um, you know, even though our guys, you know, they didn't get that overtime, they, you know, were able to benefit as far as getting their work done and, and kind of getting ahead of schedule on stuff. Yeah, that, that is good. Uh, and this, and you don't have to go into great detail on this, but, uh, but I'm wondering, like, uh, how is it decided uh, when a project needs to be undertaken? Is there an inspection crew or, or something that says, hey, you know, we, we need to look at this because uh, it's in bad shape and, and it needs to go to the top of the list? Something like that? Sure. So, it, you know, it all depends on, on what it is. Um, you know, we have an awesome staff of engineers um, that, you know, keep track of all this stuff and everything, you know, on a schedule. Um, but of course, like with our bridges, our, our crews are out there, you know, they're doing uh, inspections every single day. And there are times where we will find stuff that it's, you know, it needs quicker attention than what we had originally anticipated. And, you know, there our guys are and gals are awesome about, you know, keeping an eye on everything. Um, and of course, that, you know, trickles down to maintenance too. Uh, some of those projects that our maintenance crews do, you know, may have used to be our capital projects, but our crews are very talented and they can do it in-house, which is awesome. Um, and, it's a, and it's a savings, too, uh, to do those projects in-house. So, um, you know, a lot of teamwork and effort goes into all of our projects. And, you know, of course, our, you know, ahead of a, a resurfacing project, for example, our crews get out there and they'll replace culverts, you know, and, and we do that all in-house to prep for that. So, a lot of teamwork and coordination goes on um, amongst our employees. Yeah, that's that's good to know. Well, we uh, we do have some pretty good roads. We have to say, you know, with all complaints of the yes. barrels aside, things are <laughs> being pretty well taken care of. So we appreciate it. And if you would pass that along to uh, as many crew members as you can today, we would appreciate that too. All right, Lauren? Absolutely. We appreciate that. All right. Well, thanks for being uh, with us this morning, and I hope you have full power the rest of the day. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> All right. We'll talk to you again pretty soon. Thanks so much. All right. Thanks. That's Take care. L you too. That's Lauren Burrell, Public Information Officer for ODOT District 11, our guest this morning on the 830 High Beam here on the Tusk.